I'm going to be turning this stainless steel stock pot into a foundry, foundry furnace, but uh, as you can see, I've already attempted to do this once and I wasn't happy with the way it turned out, so I, uh, I busted all the refractory out of it and I'm going to do it over again. The main thing that I didn't like about the first attempt was the inside was much too small. I used this 3 inch pipe to form the inside and that proved much too small. What I was going for was a nice thick refractory lining to insulate this really well for efficiency. Uh, but that diameter really limited to, you know, the size of the crucible I could put inside. This time I'm going to be using a 4 inch pipe to form the inside. Alright, here you can see I've got my inner form and burner form all in ready to go. I'm ready to start ramming in the, the refractory mix. Okay, so for every one gallon pail of perlite, I'm going to be adding into it 350 milliliters sodium silicate along with 350 milliliters of water. I've gotten the consistency I want. Now it, it sounds wet. And I can squeeze it into a nice little nugget again. This is the consistency you want. As wet as possible, but without dripping when you squeeze it. First one gallon batch perlite firmly compressed into the bottom. Pack it down as hard as you can. I found out that's important as well. Now when packing this down, it's, it'll kind of feel like when you're packing down wet snow, suddenly it'll become very solid and it's like you can stand on it and that's, that's how you want it. Now that the walls are dry, I've removed the inner form and I'm going to ram in the floor. Now I've placed my center form back in and I'm going to finish up the top. I found this area right here, right at the corner of the refractory. It's kind of a problem area. It'll tend to kind of want to break up and pull up as you remove this. So once I finish up the top, I'm going to leave this form in here until it's totally dry.
Well, there's the top all done. All that's left to do now is wait for that to dry. I'm going to be making my crucible out of this stainless steel bottle I got from the thrift store. It's got this kind of orange finish on it. Um, I don't know how that makes any sense, but uh, uh, I'm going to get that off here. Alright, I got most of that off. At least in the areas that I care about. I'm going to be cutting this top off, leaving me with just a cup. Well, I'm done cutting the top off of this stainless steel bottle, revealing the unfortunate reality that these are not as substantially made as they seem. I'm going to be drilling two holes, one here near the top and another one on the other side for my lifter tongs. These barbecue tongs are going to be my crucible tongs. I'm going to affix some pins or something on the end of each one of these tips that protrude outward so I can engage those holes and lift my crucible out. Well, first real firing of this foundry came out pretty good. Oh shit. Wow. Wow. I think it may have overheated this aluminum a little bit. It was glowing red when it was in the foundry but uh, it's been sitting here a couple minutes and it's still freaking liquid it's it's pretty insane when I was pouring the molten aluminum from the crucible it's got real high surface tension I need to figure out a better flux uh, or actually figure out how to flux it properly I think that's what's keeping the surface tension too high. It gives the appearance that the aluminum isn't hot enough, and so it's all thick, but judging from this, how it's still liquid, yeah, that was plenty hot. Even, even after having just melted all that aluminum, this is just warm on the outside. Here we are back inside with the ingots I just poured. The aluminum took the smooth surface of the stainless steel cup I poured it into pretty good. Uh, so, despite it looking very thick and gooey when you pour it, it, it will actually 
flow into the details. Outs. Thirteen and a half ounces of aluminum poured, uh, and some of you may think uh, I just wasted my time melting all this aluminum just to pour it into these chunks. Like, what do you do with these? Well, these will be remelted later for future projects and the aluminum's been cleaned and it's ready to go. These will melt down faster than the, the raw scrap did. Here's another pour I did. This is brass. And uh, I didn't have the proper, you know, fluxing material and whatnot, so so it, it, it's pretty rough. These two ingots are similar in size. the The brass one is bigger, but man, is the brass one heavier? Actually, I'd like to see how much heavier it is. Oh, it's still on pounds. What up with that? 36 grams aluminum. 144 grams. 140, wait. 144 grams brass. <laughs> 